George Walker was born in Washington, D.C. on June 27, 1922. He began taking piano lessons at the young age of five. Before graduating from Dunbar High School at 14 years old, George Walker performed in his first public recital at Howard University's Andrew Rankin Memorial Chapel. He went on to study piano and organ at Oberlin College and graduated with the highest honors in his conservatory class. He was then admitted to the Curtis Institute of Music to study piano, chamber music, and composition. He graduated with artist diplomas in piano and composition, becoming the first black person to graduate from the Curtis Institute of Music. He played Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto with the Philadelphia Orchestra, becoming the first black instrumentalist to debut with this orchestra. In 1950, George Walker became the first black instrumentalist to be signed by a major management company, the National Concert Artist. In 1954, he made an unprecedented tour of seven European countries, playing in Sweden, Denmark, Holland, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and England. George Walker has composed over 90 works for orchestra, chamber orchestra, piano, strings, voice, organ, clarinet, guitar, brass, woodwinds, and chorus. His music has been performed by nearly every major orchestra in the United States. In 1996, George Walker became the first black composer to receive the coveted Pulitzer Prize in music for his work, Lilacs for Voice and Orchestra, premiered by the Boston Symphony. George Bridgetower's birthday is speculated to be between 1778 and 1780. His career had an early start. Bridgetower's debut performance in April of 1789 was in Paris, France, when he was only 9 or 10 years old. In that same time, he held concerts in London, Bath, and Brighton in England. In 1791, the Prince of Wales, soon King George IV, pledged Bridgetower under his wing and appointed tutors for him. He ended up being first violinist in the Prince's private orchestra for 14 years, and Bridgetower also performed numerous solo concerts and became extremely famous and celebrated by his peers. Around 1802, he made friends with Beethoven, who described Bridgetower as an absolute master of his instrument, and dedicated his ninth violin sonata in A minor to Bridgetower, in which he premiered, but then later changed the name to the Kreutzer Sonata after an argument with Richard. Bridgetower was then elected to the Royal Society of Musicians in 1807, and in 1811, Bridgetower earned a Bachelor of Music degree at Cambridge University, where he did some composing. He is believed to have written many works for violin, cello, piano, and voice, but most of them have been lost over time. Amanda Aldridge, born 1866, was a British opera singer, teacher, and composer who worked under the pseudonym Montague Ring. Aldridge pursued both performing and composing until laryngitis led to a throat injury that cut her vocal career short. She dedicated herself to teaching and composition, so she ended up leaving quite the legacy in the British music scene and in African British circles in London. Aldridge made a huge contribution to parlor music. She wrote over 30 songs and dozens of pieces of instrumental music. Parlor songs were popular songs, usually for voice and piano accompaniment, designed for use and enjoyment in living rooms, often written so as not to be too virtuosic. This enabled amateur and professional musicians alike to perform them. Her works included Three Arabian Dances, Lazy Dance, and songs like Little Southern Love Song and Little Missy Cakewalk. Edmund Dede was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, where his father gave him his first music lessons. As a child, Dede first learned the clarinet, but soon switched to the violin, on which he was considered a prodigy and studied with the great Ludovico Gabici. In the mid-1850s, he moved to Paris after saving money as a cigar maker in Mexico, and in 1857, he was accepted into the Paris Conservatory of Music. He then went on to serve as the assistant conductor at the Alcazar Theater for 27 years. As a highly accomplished violinist, Dede performed his own compositions as well as those of others. He favored pieces by the French composer Kreutzer. Dede wrote ballets, operettas, overtures, and more than 250 dances and songs. In addition to his theatrical music, he wrote six string quartets and a cantata. The sheet music for his melody, My Poor Heart, is the oldest surviving piece of sheet music by a Creole of color from New Orleans. The majority of his works are stored in the National Library of France in Paris. Joseph Boulogne is believed to have been born Christmas Day between 1739 and 1745. Boulogne was educated from an extremely young age where he became familiar with Negro spirituals sung by his mother and the military music of the bands that were playing parades by his home. 
At the age of 13, he enrolled in an academy for fencing and horsemanship in Paris, France. And as a black boy, he had to not only develop his mind, but his hands to defend his mind. And at 15, he was beating the strongest fighters. And at 17, he had the greatest speeds. And he only lost one match his entire career and became known as one of the finest swordsmen in Europe. And his technique carried right over into his violin playing. His teacher, Gorset, organized special concerts each year for France's best musicians and invited Boulogne to play, where he was accepted by the crowd because of his talents. His writing style for the violin became celebrated as some of the very best and was soon invited to Versailles to play for the Queen. He wrote numerous works, including three sets of string quartets, two symphonies, six operas, three violin sonatas, 14 violin concertos, a sonata for harp and flute, a bassoon concerto, and a clarinet concerto, just to name a few. And with his background in fencing, during the French Revolution, he became leader of one of the few black militias. Many of his works were lost and burned during the later years of his life, but he was and should continue to be celebrated as one of the greatest composers of all time. Born in Galveston in 1874, musician and musicologist Maude Cooney here inherited a legacy that was rich, horrifying, and uniquely American. Her paternal grandfather had been one of the largest slaveholders in Texas and an advocate for the preservation of slavery, while her paternal grandmother was his slave. This means that Maud Cooney Hare's father, Wright Cooney, was born a slave. Despite the prejudice caused by his dark complexion, Wright Cooney grew up to become a successful entrepreneur, politician, and activist. Maud took after her father as an activist. Throughout the course of her career, she taught at the Texas Deaf, Dumb, and Blind Institute for Colored Youths, founded the Allied Arts Center in Boston, served as music editor of the NAACP, and published many influential works as a musicologist. She was the first music scholar to direct public attention to Creole music, publishing a collection of six Creole folk songs with commentary in 1921. Her best-known work is Negro Musicians and Their Music, where she details the development of African-American music, contextualizing it both nationally and internationally. 